Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC guy. Well, today we're going to go back and take another look at the hyperfocus signal boards. And what we're going to take a look at today is the ability to set it up so that when a turnout ahead of a locomotive is set against it, set for a diverging route or the points are closed against it, it will provide a red light on the signal and stop the train before an accident occurs. So we'll take a look at that on the layout. I'll show you how it works. And then I've drawn a nifty little wiring diagram to show you how to wire it up. Now one thing I do want to point out about the hyperfocus signal boards is that he does have another batch uh, of eight ready now to go up on uh, eBay. So those should be available on Saturday. And um, it's not very many. And the reason that he only releases small batches of these is because all of these large components, the various connectors here, the current sensing transformer here, he has to put these all together by hand. So the major amount of the work, all of the small components are put on, on, on the board in China where it's made and then he has to add all this other stuff by hand. So it takes a little while for him to do that and consequently he's not doing a big batch of these at a time. Okay, so let's go ahead over to the layout now and take a look at how the turnout warning can be wired into your signals. Hit that little red uh, subscribe button, and when the little bell comes up, click on it and click all. Okay, so this is the same scene as we saw uh, in the last video, and you can see we've got a nice green light there. We have a boxcar on the siding uh, next to the two main tracks. And now I'm going to step in here and I'm going to throw a crossover. And I'm going to throw the crossover right here. And then when I throw this crossover, both of these turnouts are going to be set for the diverging route. And that's what we want to worry about. So let me throw that and watch the signal. So you heard the switch machines throw and you saw it change to a red light. Now why, why do we want a red light there? Well, if a train is coming down this track and the points are set against it, when the locomotive goes through these set of points, it's going to derail, okay, because that point is set against it. So you don't want a train to come whipping in here at speed hit those points that are thrown against it and derail. The same thing, if you had a train coming up this way, it would also hit a set of points closed against it. So you want your signals to send a stop command to, to locomotives coming this direction. So that takes care of the crossover with two turnouts, one on each main line, the northbound main and the southbound main. But what about up here where I've got the double crossover only on the southbound main. Well, let me throw things back. We'll get back to a green signal. And now I'm going to throw the double crossover here. Okay, those points are thrown. And you can see that we now have a red signal because a train coming down this track is going to be diverted through these turnouts and onto this siding and it could cause an accident. So you don't want that to happen. You want to stop the train before it gets in here. And the same thing could happen from the opposite direction if a train were routed through there. But it does not affect the northbound main. And as a result, your wiring has to be different for the northbound main and the southbound main in this case. Of course, if you've just got a single truck running through here, it would be a lot simpler because it would be straightforward wiring. Any turnout, uh, turnout that is thrown for a diverging route uh, would affect trains going in both directions. But for this purpose right now, what I'm doing here with the Southern Railway, they used right hand running rule so that trains would be proceeding south on the right hand track, north on the right hand track here. 
and they would not be crossing back and forth on a regular basis, only under special orders. Okay, so what I want to do now then is I've shown you how this works. We'll clear that again. Okay, so we have a green signal again. So what I want to do now then is show you the wiring that you have to do in order to do this once you have the hyperfocus signal board installed on your model railroad. And the wiring isn't all that difficult, but there are a couple of things you have to be concerned about. So let me point those out to you. The two separate northbound and southbound tracks are electrically separated from each other and their signals are separated from each other. You have a switch machine controlling these points and a switch machine controlling these points. And I'll remind you that I'm using the DCC Concepts Cobalt IP Digital Switch Machines, which have a built-in accessory decoder. And they also have uh, provisions for a single pole double throw switch. So you can wire that in and it, uh, it is these three center connections here that allow you to do that because you would put your common wire that's the feed wire in here, and then one of these two would output that feed to the turnout input on the hyperfocus signal board. And I'll show you that in a wiring diagram here in a minute. Um, it doesn't sound very straightforward now, but it is, let me tell you. Now the only thing you have to worry about here is you're going to be running the positive wire in here, and then it's going to come out here or here. And whether or not it comes out from this contact or this contact depends on your or the orientation of the switch machine. Because remember, the switch machine could be oriented facing that way, or it could be facing this way. And that's going to change which one of these switch contacts is going to be forwarding that power onto the hyperfocus signal board. So what you want to do is you want to put your feed in here, and then make the connection that goes to the uh, hyperfocus signal board out of one, hook it up, power it up, test it, and see if it works. If it doesn't, then you move it to this contact and do the same thing over again and see if the red signal lights up with it in that orientation. And that's the only way I can tell you. That's what I did. I had to put it in one first, test it, move it, uh, and I had one that came up correct, one that came up incorrect. So it just depends on, you know, you got a 50-50 chance of getting it right or getting it wrong. And this would also work with a tortoise switch machine because the tortoise has eight different positions on it and uh, one and eight are your control wires for the switch machine itself. And then uh, two, three, and four are one single pole double throw switch, five, six, and seven are the other. So it's the same wiring setup for here as it would be for a tortoise. That allows you to then send signals from this switch machine to the signal board located at the other end of the layout and from this switch machine to the signal board controlling the signal at this end. So you keep them separated. And the reason you have to keep them separated is down here. On this double crossover we have two sets of points that are located on the southbound main. And those only affect trains on the southbound main. They do not affect trains traveling on the northbound main. And also, because I have it set up so that all four sets of points throw when I hit the uh, activate button, so if this one's thrown, that one's going to be thrown, and that one's going to be thrown, and that one's going to be thrown. So you only uh, need to run a wire from one switch machine for the four sets of points here on the double crossover. And that will take care of the signal going to the circuit with the hyperfocus circuit board uh, for this set of, of points. And that only gets fed into the hyperfocus signal board for the signal at this end of the southbound main. The problem that you run into, though, is if you try to wire everything uh, together as one uh, combined feed going to the uh, circuit board, 
then you could have power feeding back through the wire and connecting to a wire that goes down to the signal for the northbound main. Now this is where it gets complicated because you have to think about this. Now initially I thought I could double up the feed here and just use this one switch machine to feed the control power to the hyperfocus signal board for the northbound and the southbound signal board. You can't do that. And the reason for that is the feed for this and this would feed back through uh, to the feed that goes down to the signal board for the northbound main. So what it comes down to is I had to wire, have a wire going from this, from the switch machine for this set of points and for this set of points going into the turnout uh, control circuit here on the hyperfocus signal board for the set of, uh, for the signals up on the, that end of the layout. Then I had to have a separate feed from that set of points, the switch machine on that set of points going all the way to the end down here at the, uh, for the northbound main. Now I hope that's clear. It's not for me standing here talking to you, but hopefully by the time you start putting this together, uh, it will be clear to you. So with that said, let's go ahead now and take a look at the wiring diagram that I have prepared to kind of give you a little bit more clarity to this. Now, first of all here, this portion of the uh, wiring diagram here is taken from the instructions for the hyperfocus circuit board. And you can see you've got your DC power supply. I'm using 12 volts and it's a positive and negative feed. And the red is your positive. That's the uh, standard uh, for this. And then here is your circuit board. So this is the circuit board itself. There's a turnout in position here and a turnout here. So one is for signals located at each end of your tracks. Okay. Now, so that's that connection right there. So you're taking your DC power, your 12 volt DC power, positive, running it into a switch machine. And I showed you that right here just a minute ago. It goes in on the uh, IP digital. It goes in this position here. That is your common. And then these would be your two diverging feeds, depending on the orientation of the switch machine itself. Okay, so that's the double pole, double throw switch built into the switch machine right here. So the wire, the positive uh, 12 volt feed goes into the switch machine, single pole double throw switch. And then depending on which way the switch is thrown, it's either gonna come out, it could go this way and go nowhere, or it could go through here and then feed into the turnout connection on the hyperfocus signal board. Okay, so then when the switch is thrown for a diverging route, it provides 12 volt, power here to the turnout in connection on the board and that's going to give you your red light on your signals. And this would have to be duplicated for each set of points. So you'll have a set of points here with a switch machine, a switch machine here. You only need to worry about one switch machine here because it'll cover all four. And then down at this end, you're going to need to do the same thing, a switch machine here and a switch machine here. So you're going to be wiring up one, two, three, four, five wires is all it requires set up like this to provide that turnout warning signal for the southbound and the northbound. As I said earlier, it gets complicated in here because you've only got two sets of points that affect the northbound main. So you can wire those up this way individually, run, connect the two together, and then run them in like this to the turnout input for that signal there, okay? And then at this end, that this is where it gets complicated because you have a set of points here to be wired in, you have one of these two have to be wired in this way, and then another one down here. And then all three of those wires will have to go in to the turnout in contact here on the circuit board controlling this particular set of signals. So I have two of these circuit boards, one for this set of signals here and one for that set of signals here. I have two wires from the switch machines here 
going into the turnout in position on that hyperfocus circuit board here. And I have one, two, and three wires that will feed in here. Now, how do I feed in three wires? Because I will tell you, the connection point in here, there's just not enough room to get more than one wire in there. Let me show you how I did that. So for connecting all of these wires that go into one position together, I just use one of the Wago uh, connectors here. And that allows you, in this case, you can open these and you can connect three wires in here. I had uh, two wires coming in from the two uh, northbound uh, switch machine outputs. They feed in two here and here. And then I put a third wire in here that will go to the uh, turnout in on the uh, circuit board. So that simplifies the wiring a bit. Now, in the case with this one where I've got to have one, two, three wires in and one wire out, then I can go to a uh, five connector lever lock here, or lever nut. Yeah, these are called lever nuts. Okay, these are Wagos. I bought this box of them, different sizes, um, off of Amazon, so you can get an idea of that. If you were interested in, it's got the five, it's got threes, and then it's got some of these straight through connectors. Kind of nice. Ah, and also some twos. So it's a nice setup to experiment with and find out what you need. And it doesn't cost a lot. So that's a simple way to make all of these multiple connections to feed into the turnout in connector slot here. Okay. So hopefully that is straightforward enough for you. The best way to figure this out is actually to sit down and work with it under your layout. Uh, you don't have to worry about all these uh, different positive wires going together because it's all from the same source. It's all plus from your power supply. So you're not going to short anything out by interconnecting these. The only problem you have is if you run a wire from here over to here, then it's going to give you a sneak path where the voltage can come through this one, and then you end up with these set of points here impacting on whether or not this is green or red. So, hopefully, that's clear. Uh, I know it sounds confusing when I discuss it, but I think once you uh, get out and start working with it and take a look at the instructions uh, that come with the uh, hyperfocus circuit board because he does a pretty good job of explaining these things in there as well. So take a look at that and uh, go from there because it is it, it, it does require a little logical thinking but it's not all that difficult. Well that's a wrap for today's video. Hopefully the demonstration I just showed you, as well as the wiring diagram, will give you an idea of how this works. And, you know, the logic of it is pretty straightforward, and it's covered in the instructions. So that's it for this week. Next time, I'm going to be taking a look at installing the industry tracks on the rear of the module that I left uh, incomplete because I needed to get the building uh, flats completed for that. And I've put those flats together and I'm in the midst of doing the final painting and weathering. But we can still go ahead, install the track and get that wired up. So that'll be the next, uh, the next video. So until then, take it easy, be safe, and we'll see you here with that next video when I get it done. Bye now.